The first year of medical school will be tough. Uh, it'll probably be one of the biggest changes in your life in many ways. New challenges, new lifelong friends, and the new understanding of this crazy thing that carries us around for hopefully 80 plus years. I just finished my first year of medical school and here are the 11 things that I think are essential for your first year because they're the things I actually used. A stethoscope, a pen light, a reflex hammer, safety goggles, scrubs, business casual clothes, books, a lock, a portable charger, headphones, and a computer. What's up, Zach here. I'm a medical student in Philadelphia. When I started thinking about uh, going to medical school this time last year, I remember looking online and seeing a bunch of different items and lists of stuff. And I remember I bought a ton of stuff on Amazon. Now a ton of that stuff actually ended up being junk and stuff that I didn't really use. So I thought it might be helpful to make a list of the things that I actually used as a first year Quick disclaimer here, uh, I'm new to this whole medicine thing and YouTube really. So these are the things that I used and I think are necessary, but are definitely not 100% the best or completely right thing to get. So the first thing is a stethoscope. So here is my stethoscope. It's the Lippmann Master Cardiology. Um, yeah, you definitely need a stethoscope. Hopefully you're not uh, going to medical school uh, and you didn't think you need a stethoscope, but you're gonna be listening to some cool things. You're gonna be listening to hearts, uh, lungs, some stomachy kind of sounds. I know a bunch of people that use the basic Lippmann stethoscope, that's fine. Uh, I just know when I'm walking around with this stethoscope, a bunch of people in the hospital say, oh, that's a good stethoscope. You can probably do some cool things with that. And I'm like, no, I have no idea what I'm doing. I don't know anything, I'm a first year medical student. And then uh, they quickly run away. If you have this one end here, that means that it's a diaphragm and a bell built in. So what does that mean? So the diaphragm is the high frequency sounds. So that's kind of your lung sounds or kind of, they say high frequency, but just it's mainly lung sounds. You're gonna hear breathing better when you push harder. With this stethoscope, you push harder and you hear better high frequency sounds. The bell is when you push softer. Now with the bell and you push softer, you can hear low frequency sounds, which are the heart. So yeah, push hard, lungs, soft, heart. The other thing is when you put these earpieces in, make sure it's pointing out towards your nose. That's the best way to remember it. Um, so when you're putting them in again, they should be going towards your nose and then they slip nicely into your ears. Don't put them the other way because you will look like a doofus like I did many, many times. Okay, the pen light. The pen light is the next thing. So why do you need a pen light? Well, mainly you use it because to look in someone's throat or to look in someone's, check someone's pupils. Um, that's the main reason I've kind of used it. When I first looked into getting these last year, again, I bought a bunch of these crappy plastic ones that really didn't have much light whatsoever. Um, so this one's really nice. We don't want to strobe in here. We learn about medicine. So this one's really nice because it can get bigger and it can get smaller. Um, and, and also it feels nice. It's like a hefty piece of metal. Uh, I don't know, I just like it better than the other ones. And the next thing is a reflex hammer. I know you guys are thinking, this isn't that triangle thingy where you smack someone's knee. Um, no, it's not. Uh, I had that triangle thingy. I had that triangle thingy in my first clinical experience. And we have these things called standardized patients, which are actors. And the actors kind of sit there and they were sitting on the side. And I took my triangle thing and I went to smack, smack the knee, nothing happened. So I kept smacking. Eventually, I think the lady started hurting because she was like, oh, you're, I don't think you're hurting. And then, so I was like, I can't do this. I'm gonna be a bad doctor. I should quit medical school now. But I remembered I had this fancy schmancy thing in my backpack. I took it out, wham, first try, knee reflex, patellar reflex. So safety goggles. Safety goggles are the next thing. Uh, you need these for anatomy lab. You don't want stuff flying in your face. The kind of goggles doesn't really matter. I mean, you just want it to be shatterproof and have the side guard, so if stuff comes up or an item flies up, you should be fine. Um, I usually carry two or three because my friends usually forget them and I can give them to them and then they owe me a favor and I make them buy me stuff and it's great. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. Don't go too crazy here. Next thing are scrubs. So. The scrubs I have, and this is a big point of contention here, are these fig scrubs. I like them, I like them a lot. I had the Cherokee ones, I think, in the beginning, and they were fine, but they just were stretchy and they weren't very comfortable. Um, I know people, some people will be like, Zach, how are you, why are you spending so much money on scrubs? And I'm not really in the hospital all that much right now. I'm mainly in the anatomy lab, so I'm not getting like blood and guts and that much junk on me. Maybe when I'm in the hospital more, I'll switch to the kind of hospital given scrubs. But for now, I really like these. Um, and I think if you're not getting that much stuff on them that often, it's worth it, especially in anatomy lab when you're standing there forever. Or if you're shadowing a doctor and there's no chance of anything really getting on you, 
I would just get the figs. And again, this is personal preference. Some people are gonna be like, what are you talking about? Um, but I think the cost to benefit ratio is worth it for me. Okay, books. Books. So what books do you need? Now, nowadays, honestly, you really don't need any books. Um, there are two books that I use, and I'll tell you why. Um, so the first book I use is this BRS Physio book, um, and it's really the only book that has a really nice summary of the physiology, of kind of every section that you're going through, so the heart, the lungs, and I really like it. It also has some nice practice questions at the end, which are, have been really helpful to me. So this is the first guy. And the second guy is first aid. Oh, the first aid book. Everyone knows the first aid book. Um, so this first aid book, I understand why people get it. Um, and I got it in the beginning, I jumped on the trend, but honestly, I would not recommend it getting it anymore. Especially if you're using Anki or something like that, all those first aid items are gonna be on Anki. All that stuff is gonna be there. So it's really nice because you just go to Anki and, oh, crash, that's a great advertisement for Anki, great job. Um, but you go to Anki and you say, you see something like nasal polyps are associated with what in adults? And I don't know the answer to this. Aspirin intolerant asthma is apparently the answer. And if you click this button, I'm not gonna click it for copyright reasons, but you'll see that section in the first aid book. So Anki's great. I'll probably make a video about it. It governs my life. I probably do it for three to five hours every morning for the past God knows how long. Um, but I didn't know this question, so I hit again. It drains into the medial medus, middle medus. I think that counts. So I'd say hard because I didn't get it completely right, and so on and so forth. But yeah, it's pretty good. Um, there are two other books from my professors, and I use them because they write the exams. So, I mean, I'd kind of be dumb not to use them. Um, I, again, I don't really use any other books whatsoever. So should you buy any books? Yeah, I'd buy BRS Physiology, the physical one, because it's nice to have. But other than that, I wouldn't buy any books. Business clothes, fairly straightforward here. Um, guys, no jeans, no t-shirts, please no t-shirts, no shorts. You should see in the first couple of weeks when someone forgets their white coat and they're wearing shorts and the white coat. It's a, one of my friends did that. It's, it's a great sight. Um, but really, you've got to think like you're going to be a professional doctor. You're going to be dealing with people when they're really sick. So if you're dealing with people when they're really sick, who do you want around you? Someone who looks professional or someone that doesn't look professional? I think I'd want someone that looks professional. So again, just look professional. I only wear a tie. Tie is the big debate. I only wear a tie when I'm seeing patients, and when I'm, but when I'm using it for clinical exams or experience like that, I won't wear a tie. Uh, girls usually don't f mess up when they're, when they're wearing business casual clothes, at my school at least. Okay, the next thing is a lock. You're gonna probably have a locker, an anatomy locker, so you will want this just because you're probably gonna be carrying, if you have an iPad, a MacBook Pro, or a MacBook, Apple Pencil, your iPhone, all these kind of things, you're gonna be carrying around $2,000 in your backpack, so it'd be nice to have a lock. Again, any old one, doesn't really matter. It's just the one I use is that one. So portable charger, now this is the charger I use. Um, now this charger has been pretty awesome. It's my sneakily, my most used item in medical school, really it is. And, you can ju and you'll just be sitting in lecture for a long time or you'll be at a friend's house, you won't have a plug-in, something like that, and you just use this guy. Um, and really, I use it when I travel, I use it when I go on car trips, plane trips. It's really the, my most used thing that I've used. Honestly, I would get one of these. I'll link it in the description below, but it's Anker or something. Just make sure you have the right ports on the bottom port. The next thing that I think is essential for medical school are noise-canceling headphones. Now, if you have a roommate, especially a roommate who's decided to learn guitar, um, no, that isn't a, a sneaky dig at my roommate. I live alone, thankfully, uh, but I did have a roommate in college. I'm not gonna go there. Um, so these ones are the Bose QC3, QC35 headphones. Uh, I got these originally for wearing on planes, like watching movies on planes, which they're awesome for. But yeah, if you're in the library or you have an annoying roommate, or if you want to edit videos, or if you just want high quality sound, I think these ones are really good. And you'll use them for, I had the older version of them for 10 years, so you'll use these guys for a while. Finally, the last thing is an iPad or computer. Now, I use both. I use an iPad and a computer. I know some people that just use the iPad, but I don't know. I like during lectures, I like to take notes with this fancy little eye pencil thing, eye pencil, Apple pencil thing, and it's, it's pretty nice. But when I come home, I like to condense it all on my computer and I like the keyboard. Um, so yeah, I use an iPad with the Apple Pencil and a computer. So that was it. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, this is my first YouTube video, so have mercy on my soul, please. 
Um, but if you're about to start medical school or you're a couple months away from starting medical school, uh, get excited because it's really, honestly, last year was probably the happiest year of my life. It's, it's a really amazing experience. You'll meet amazing people. Um, it is hard, but realize that you're with a bunch of people that are also going through hard stuff. Um, so they'll be there to help you. The advisors at your school will be able to help you. Your family will love to hear from you and help from you, hopefully. Um, so yeah, get excited. It's going to be awesome. Thank you.